Welcome to the Win Make Give podcast. Chad Himes here with my friend Bob Stewart. Bob, how are you today? Chad, I'm real good, man. I'm real good. I, anytime I get a chance to to carve some time out of my day to sit down with you and and birth another Win Make Give episode is a good day. So let's do it. So let's do it. all right, let's do it, Bob. You know, we did an episode recently where we were talking about reinventing yourself. And well, I've reinvented myself slightly because I've come out of my closet office uh, that I recorded that one in. I'm, I'm now in my home gym office because currently it's where the internet's the strongest. Next week, I will actually move to my new podcasting recording space after the AV guys have shown up and actually put the hardwired internet in. So yet here's the thing, Bob, when we talked about reinventing yourself, I gave this term in there, and that term was ikigai. And you you might remember we talked about ikigai for for a moment there, about kind of finding your purpose, finding your reason. And uh, I heard from a lot of our listeners. I heard from a lot of our listeners who messaged me about, where's that image when I didn't post it quickly enough in the Facebook group? Uh, (laughs) I heard from a lot of our people about, wow, I needed to hear just that part of it, that Ikigai thing really mattered. Uh, So Bob, it it just kind of made sense as soon as I was getting those messages that I kind of sat down and and sent you some information and we've kind of put together an episode that's called Ikigai and and that's what we're going to talk about here today. We're going to dive deeper into this term. Okay, so just for anybody listening here, if you wanted to go, like it's I-K-I-G-A-I. Ikigai, it's a it's a Japanese um, word, right? And what is the actual? Do you know? Do we have the actual definition of it? Uh, I can give you the actual definition of it. Usually, I call you on that, uh, it, and it depends on the language that you're you're quoting, right? Okay. In Japanese, it means reason for being. Ah, okay. Okay, because iki in Japanese means life, and guy describes value or worth. So ikigai is your life value, your life worth, which in English has kind of been translated to your reason for being. Okay. Okay. So that that's the definition of ikigai. And uh, I wanted to share, I, as I was doing some research on it, uh, there were two gentlemen, Hector Garcia and uh, Frances uh, Morales. Uh, they were researchers and they were having this philosophical, co- philosophical. No, they were having a philosophical oh, oh, oh. conversation. Words still getting tied up in my tongue sometimes here. Uh, they were having a philosophical conversation on life. And during this conversation, one of them mentioned the ikigai term to the other, and kind of brought it back up. So they went on this research trip, kind of like how you stalk our our clients when we have guests coming on. Yeah. They kind of went on this stalking the term ikigai and what it really meant. And it took them to Okinawa. Now, now, Bob, I know you know Okinawa. And do you know why Okinawa is probably famous to you? Uh, I mean, we're, there'd be some World War II references in there. Um, for, but I, I believe, Chad, that Okinawa has like the highest life expectancy in the world, I think. Okay. Right? Is that- Bob, you're way smarter than I was because I didn't know that. To me, all I truly knew about Okinawa is that's where Mr. Miyagi is from. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. so, Mr. Miyagi is from Okinawa. That's all I knew about it. Um, but you're right. They found that it also has the highest life expectancy in the world. So they, they stayed there for a while and wanted to learn about what made that happen. And most of the, the people who live there said it was finding or discovering their ikigai and truly living it was the thing that brought them joy, which extended their life. Okay, so Chad, so let's real quick before, because I think what we wanted to talk about are some rules for for Ikigai, right? And that's kind of going to be what our discussion is today is this kind of unpacking of what is it, like what are the rules you live by if you're you're driving towards this idea of of living your Ikigai or, or, you know, living your your life filled with, with, you know, its highest purpose. So the, 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 the graph, the chart, the drawing that, that people were giving you a hard time about not getting posted up on Facebook immediately, right? So they can't see it, but we have posted it in the group. Yep. But, and we did in the last episode, you kind of described it. Can you describe it for me again so that we can kind of bring the different facets of Ikigai 
you know, together and, and, and then we'll dive in and talk about some of the rules. That, Absolutely. That, Absolutely. Yeah. So, so Bob, you're right. It's in our Facebook group, which is facebook.com. Uh, and then win, make, give would be the group you'd want to search. I posted a picture of it after the last episode. Now, I don't know what order these go. You might have to scroll back a little bit, uh, yet it's there for you. And it's a Venn diagram on steroids is how I described it to you last time. Now, the Venn diagram, for those of you who don't know the term, those are when the two circles overlap and you've got like hot, cold, and where they overlap, it's warm, right? So you've seen those diagrams many times. So an Ikigai is drawn out as kind of a Venn diagram on steroids because it's four circles, one at the 12 o'clock, one at the three o'clock, one at the six o'clock, one at the nine o'clock, where there's this center part where they all overlap, Bob. So I feel like you would be like, you would be really good at, uh, what's the game where you like act out the thing. Cause like that, you yeah. say in the 12, three, six, nine, that was like the perfect for me. My brain just totally was like, Oh yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Sorry. Keep going. Charades a little, you know, charades. there it is. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good. There we go. I can't talk in charades though. So it'd be interesting to try to explain <laughs> this one yet. Here we go. The, the 12 o'clock circle are the things you love. Okay. The three o'clock circle is what the world needs. The six o'clock circle is what you can be paid for. And the nine o'clock circle is what you are good at. Now, circles all overlap each other. So love and what the world needs overlap each other and become your mission. What you can be paid for and what the world needs becomes your vocation. What you're good at and what you can be paid for becomes your profession. And what you love and what you're good at becomes your passion. Well, now when all four of these circles come together, it puts you right in the middle at your ikigai, which is that reason for living, which truly would be your passion, mission, vocation, and profession all coming together, Bob. Interesting. Okay. So we're looking to line up things we like to do with the things we're good at, with things the world needs. But if that was all we had and we couldn't get paid for it, we probably wouldn't be doing that very long. So I love that they uh, account for it because this is when make give and there so uh, we've got to get paid sometimes <laughs> right so okay so what what you love what the world needs what you can be paid for and what you're good at and when you can figure out a way to bring all four of those things together and they overlap is where our ikigai guy lives sure bob i love public speaking and helping people right those are two things i truly love what the world needs sometimes I believe is a message that I'm sometimes sharing that I get to use the podcast maybe to share, right? What I can be paid for, well, that's showing up and doing a training or speaking. And what I'm good at, well, I'm good at speaking in front of groups of people and helping people walk away with, with a mind change. Boom, I, I have been able through these things to sit down. Now it gets a little deeper, yet I've been able to sit down and find out what my happy place is. That's why I do this podcast, because this podcast does not include the what you get paid for circle, right? <laughs> you and I aren't sitting here saying we're getting a paycheck to do this. So I couldn't live on just the podcast, but it does feed into the other three circles. And then by finding the opportunities to get paid to do this sort of thing, now I get to add it in and now I hit my guy. For me, it was very simple to figure out the center of this, this chart. I love it. Uh, Chad, you and I have a, a, maybe a similar... Similar EQ guys, right? Like I love connecting with people and and helping people get more out of themselves than they thought they were capable of. Um, I, the world needs that, so that's that's good, right? Like we, we can be paid for it. I happen to to get paid for it in a sense where I, I run an organization that trains and coaches people on leveraging software to to become more efficient in their business and and live bigger lives and. Um, and I don't know, I was 20 years into this, man, that they're still paying me to do it. I must have a, a decent, I must be decent at it, right? So yeah, like, I, and look, the, I think when you're, what, look, I would have to imagine that as they went and talked to these people who, who lived long lives, and many of them kind of correlated that back to the fact that they'd found that Iki guy, I mean, we love what we do. We love coming into work each day, right? Like, there, we don't have a lot of stress in our lives that... That we hate, you know, every day we get up and we face that we don't like doing. And it's, it's not, it's not a big l jump of logic to figure out why somebody would end up living a long time if they're doing something they love that the world needs that they can get paid for and they're good at it, right? Like, um, yeah. makes a lot of sense to me. All right. 10 rules, Bob. 
How do we do it? Yeah. Well, like what kind of, what kind of major changes am I going to have to make to my life to really be living my Ikigai? Am I, am I capable? Let's dive into the rules, man. So here's rule number one, stay active. Don't retire, Mm. right? That's rule one, Bob. The people who had this long life expectancy, who said they were, they were living long, long, long times was because they were staying active and they never retired. They might have changed what they were doing, but they always found a way to help others. They always found a way to be progressing at something, to be doing things of value, right? There's part of the Ikigai right there, what the world needs, that you're doing that, you're bringing value. I heard a term years ago, a gentleman I used to work with, uh, Bob Kalinsky, and Bob was at a point of retiring and he never wanted to retire because he knew and he believed retirement to him meant life was over. I mean, he loved it. And, and I've always said to my wife, I don't know that I'm ever going to retire. Bob and, and came to me one day and he said, I found it. I'm not retiring. I'm rewiring. And I just thought that was such a great different term to use instead of retirement. It's rewirement because you've got to stay active, Bob, and you've got to keep learning You've got to keep growing. It's the old expression, right? As soon as you stop learning, you start dying. I think that, um, look, if, if we're lucky enough in our, look, some people are like, I hate my job. I go to it every day. I've been doing it for 30 years. I hate this stupid thing. And like, I'm going to retire and do something totally different. But if you've found, if you've been fortunate enough, Chad, like, like we have to find something you, you actually like doing, um, when you're done you know, doing that for the company you do it for, you're, you're kind of in that, you know, traditional way we talk about retiring, right? You're wanting to kind of step back from the day to day or whatever. You've got to find something that replaces that energy that you got from doing that thing that you were happy doing, right? So like for us, like when you, when you're officially, you know, when you retire in the traditional sense, right? you you're, you're still, go out and, and, and meet with groups of people and talk and you'll probably still have a few people that you coach and um, you, you'll see, so yeah. And if you don't, Chad, if you're like, no, I am going to step away, you're going to have to find some other way to go pour into people, to go lead people, to go mentor people, right? And, and when we don't, people's lifespans get real short after retirement if they don't replace the good aspects of, of their job or the things that brought them energy and, and, and really gave them a sense of purpose when, when they go away. I think about my, my father-in-law. He, he recently retired after basically 35 years as an educator and an administrator in education. He was a, a president of a college when he, when he ended his career. And he spent about the first six months after retirement realizing this is not for me. <laughs> and, and right, like I need to be doing something like this is my passion is helping. And so, you know, more recently he's gotten involved in some boards and some different nonprofit things. And cause, cause he, he likes to pour into people. Right. And, and he'd spent 35 years as an educator doing that. And, um, and listen, I, my wife's upstairs, but if he wouldn't have done that stuff, he, he was not going to live a, a long life in retirement, right? He had to find something to fill that passion, to give him a reason to get up every morning, to stay active. I mean, even the just getting out of the house and getting out there to the board meetings and yeah, absolutely. Number one, stay active, don't retire. And, and, and you're, you're right there. Once you retire, and I'm putting air quotes around it, right? Once you retire, you don't necessarily have that thing to get up for anymore. You could say, oh, I can stay in bed a little longer. Well, then that starts to wear on you, right? Then you can be like, well, I don't have to leave the house today, right? You don't have that meeting. You don't have that person to see. You don't have that phone call you've got to make today. So folks, I hope that you're enjoying Win, Make, Give because there's a reasonable chance. We're on season three now. Bob and I might still be doing this on season 30. Just so we don't have to retire. We could just keep coming together and doing Win, Make, Give. That's right. We'll be down to three listeners. Like, oh my God, these guys, I don't even know why I'm addicted to them now. I can't get rid (laughs) Let's we'll make it. We'll, we'll, we'll be the guys up in the Muppets, the booth, the, the two guys up there. That that'll be you and I, whoever, whatever their names were. Someone can tell me what their names were, but you know who I mean. The cranky guys up in the booth. All right. So, Bob, rule number two, or, or lesson number two, in there, right? Leave urgency behind. Slow down, real quick. Statler and Waldorf. There you go. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. So nobody has to bother messaging me. Bob's taking care of it. So I'm sure I'll get them sent to me though. All right. So leave urgency behind. Basically means slow down, Bob. 
right? So if you walk slowly, you'll go far. And when, when I was doing my research on this for, for my piece of this, I was going through this and I was like, wait a minute, I like to run fast because then I can get where I'm going faster. But they're right. I can run only so far before I'm going to tire out. If I just walked slowly, there's really nothing that would ever probably stop me. I could probably even eat while I was walking slowly, right? You wouldn't have to worry about it other than finally getting tired one day. But walk slowly, you go far because being in a hurry is inversely proportional to your quality of life. Chad, doesn't that look, I am, um, my wife will tell you that I'm, I don't like to be late. And I really, I really don't like when somebody else makes me late. And uh-huh. in, in, in my house, that's my kids, right? My boys, I, t- I take them to school every morning and I hate being late. And there's just, for me, there's a lot of stress around it. Right. Yep. And we all know, look, if you, if you don't, you don't realize this, you should, the stress kills. Yep. It, it leads to increased, you know, blood pressure and, and heart issues and like stress is not healthy. And so when I tend to be in those times when I, we're late and we're behind and I'm having to move fast, I know there's more stress on me. Right. But the day when I can somehow, some way, right, the, every parent knows the, that one magical day where everything goes perfectly and, and we slow roll our way out of the house and we're not worried about being late. Like, I, I think we all in, intrinsically know that, that slow is, is more healthy. Yes. Right? Absolutely, Bob. Stress kills. You're right. So we need to slow down because a lot of our stress is self-imposed because we're in a hurry to do something or get something done or get somewhere. It's a great point. All right, number three, don't fill your stomach. Eat a little less than you ever think you need to. Oh, man. Kind of the 80 plus rule, Bob, right? But when, when you're starting to feel full, stop. Don't push yourself to full. You can always have something a little bit later. And that's not the way, especially the American way, right? Yeah. The American way is let's go out to dinner. Let's order a, a meal. And it's really four servings on the plate. And what did mom, dad teach us when we were kids, right? Clean your plate. Wait, have you ever been to Maggiano's? I don't even Bro, know how want. wide of a change that is. Like the, our restaurants are set up for us to go in there and basically stuff our face and still take food home. Yes. Like, Look, this is one, if this is real, <laughs> if this can actually help me live a longer life, I'm going to, this is going to be a really hard rule for me to figure out. I, I'm one of those people, you know, I'm like, yeah. as I'm eating it, Chad, I'm looking at it going, ah, there's no, I shouldn't eat this. I'm so full. This is going to put me over the top and in it goes. Right. So right. you were already at a hundred percent. Forget having even stopped at 80%. Yeah. <laughs> you were already at hundred percent. And then you took it to 120% because why the hell not? Right. Again, not healthy for your body, not healthy for your organs and your inner system. You'd be much better off eating a little bit less and having something to hold you a little bit later just to keep the body moving and the blood system flowing. But here in America, it's so hard to do this one. You're right. You walk into a restaurant and they want to, you know, give you so much food that you're going to be sick before you leave. And again, my mom, love her, but I was always raised clean your plate, finish what was there. Problem is we have too much food on our plates. Get smaller plates, people. All right. <laughs> wow. Number four. I know you know number four here as uh, we were going through it and going to Maggiano's might be a great way to do this. What was number four? Surround yourself with good friends. Yeah. Um, I, I, so, um, and here, here's, look, and, and maybe later down, I think there's another one that maybe kind of ties closely to this, but um, that I, I really do believe if stress kills you, laughter can extend your life. Yes. And, and so uh, I think later there's one that's maybe similar or related, but yeah, good friends, man, who doesn't feel better after coming home from a night out with a, a group of, of good friends that lift you up and, and are talking about positive things and are moving in a similar direction in their life as you are, um, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of this one. I, I think that, you know, this is a tricky one too, as you get older, Chad, I don't know if you identify with this, but you no, know, I don't, you know, I don't make many new friends right at this age. And we're starting to get to this place where now we, our kids are in school. So we are starting to make a few uh, new parent 
friends, right? But look, most of my friends are still people I've been friends with for my, you know, my, since, since high school or college or, right? Like we don't tend to make a ton of new friends in adulthood, but man, you, you got to make it a priority, I think. I, I think it's definitely a, you know, a way to extend your life. And, and we're talking about Ikigai as this kind of method that allows us to live long, fulfilling lives, right? Yep. Uh, makes sense that, that that would include other people who lift you up and, and are there for you, maybe sometimes even when you're down, right? Yeah, and it's an excuse for a, you know, girls' night out for the ladies or a, you know, a guy's night sort of thing surrounding yourself with good friends. Those are the people who are going to tell you the truth. Those are the people, like you say, who are going to lift you up. Those are the people who are going to bring you the encouraging words that you need, Bob. These are the relationships that we need to have. People who live a long life usually are surrounded by good friends who are living a long life with them. Okay. Right. Number five, I think I'll yeah, take number five. Yeah, you, you go ahead, ahead, my friend. You yeah. go ahead. All right, I got this one, Bob, because it's get in shape. Right now, that doesn't mean you have to go Arnold Schwarzenegger shape, right? Getting in shape is going to just mean, even if it's low impact, that there's some exercise you're doing regularly because exercise releases hormones that make us feel happy. It's as simple as that. Exercise equals happy. Now, you might not be happy during it. You might not be happy the next morning if you're dealing with some of the you know, delayed onset pain that comes with it. But exercise releases hormones that make us feel happy. It's as simple and easy as that. I can tell you, I can, I'm living it right now, Bob. So uh, our listeners know I, I, I'm going through this move. This move has been, um, well, let's just say challenging at every aspect, Bob, uh, from contractor <laughs> issues that we've had to delays on things to uh, broken furniture that arrived to this, to that, uh, challenges all over the place. And I can tell the days that I'm able to get a workout in, I'm happier through the day. And days that I don't get that workout in for whatever reason it interrupts my workout, I end up in a position where I'm snappy, right? Exercise just makes us happier. And, and look, there's science, there's empirical evidence, there's like, it's, it's, it's a fact. Everyone right? should do it. It's just as easy as that. All right, I'll get off my soapbox, Bob. You bring us number six, because I think it's kind of similar to number four in some of the things you were talking about. Smile. And I would, uh, la to me, laughter, and I know laughter, I think, is one of the, the elements of the 15-point plan. A little plug for you and Jolene right there and, and the 15-point plan podcast. The, the, the rules of Iki Guy say, smile. Um, I, it, I think I would extend that to laughter, but, um, yeah. Well, I challenge you to laugh without smiling, Bob. I don't think it's possible. <laughs> That's right. It's not, it's not. Have you ever done, you know, this is a, and smile and here's why I'll extend it to laughter. Have you ever been in a room when Ben Kinney does the, uh, laugh for 30, everybody in the room laugh for 30 seconds deal, Chad? Uh, yes. Yeah. It, it always, and when you, laugh. when you do that. Yeah, well, when, so when you do that and you laugh uncontrollably for 30 seconds, you feel different afterwards. Like you can feel the energy in your body. You can feel that release of hormones similar to like you were talking about with exercising. Like laughter literally re releases dopamine in your brain and yep. you can feel it. It's, it's really weird. Most of us don't laugh for no reason for 30 seconds and then think about the physiological change to our body. Like we laugh for 30 seconds because we're at a comedy show and it's hilarious. But when we're done laughing, we're looking for the next joke, right? We're not like analyzing what your brain was doing when you got done laughing. But when Ben does that in the room, it's an exercise he has everybody do where we literally go laugh and point at each other and look like total morons, by the way. But, um, and then afterwards, he's like, okay, how do you feel? And it's like one of the only times that you would ever kind of analyze how you feel and what your brain's like after you just laughed uncontrollably for 30 seconds. It doesn't surprise me at all that smile or, or again, I, I think it extends to laughter because I, if I'm going to put a good smile on my face, I, I like to do it with something funny. But um, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. This would be a rule to live by or a rule for Iki guy. Iki guy is going to help us with live longer lives. Number seven. This is one Ben does really well, right? Reconnect with nature. So nature is going to recharge our batteries. Now, some of us are tree people. Some of us are water people. Some of us are mountain people, right? Whatever that is, it doesn't matter. It's just nature, 
getting out well, what, there, hearing. What are, what are you, Chad? Because you've been a, I think you've been a water guy. You had the what? You were living up there in Birch Bay. You got to go wa- run along the sa- the bay and all that. Are you a yeah, you a mountain I'm guy? A, you a water I'm guy? A tree guy, Bob. Okay. I, I I love trees. If I you know the dream home quiz that shows up on Facebook all the time, which mine's always the you know the mountain house or whatever like that. I don't need the the water view. I don't need to be at the water. I, I the water's okay, but I'm not an in the water kind of guy. I'm not a boat guy. So water doesn't do it for me. Mountains are fun and beautiful, but me, trees. I want to see trees. And if you've ever been near and if you've been invited to any of the homes I've lived in, uh, trees uh, everywhere. All you'll see are trees around us. Again, if you look at the artwork, Nita and I even collect the thing that inspires us, trees are in a lot of them, things like that. So yeah, nature to me is a walk in the forest or just being around trees. I love you? it. I have a, yeah. So I was born in the woods. My, my, I come from a, a many generations of loggers. So like kind of my, you know, my DNA is, is the trees. I love the trees. I love the woods. Um, my wife's a city girl. And so I think at this point in my life, we've decided that water is, is a, a nice meeting point in the middle. And, um, I think I've talked about, we're looking for a lake house right now and we'll, we'll, we'll get that thing here soon. But so we have this park near my house. It's called Swamp Creek Park. There's nothing in it, but this really cool Creek that I take my boys sometimes out and he goes fly fishes in there. And, but um, the other day, I take my boys over there all the time. I just like getting them out in the woods. It smells different, Chad. It, it feels different. It's a slow, like right when I walk into that park, I feel like stress come off my shoulders. It's, it's, I, 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 I don't like when I walk through Seattle in the city, I walk with a pace. When I walk through Swamp Creek Park, Chad, I, I stroll my friend. So, um, yeah reconnect with nature. Absolutely. You know, I, I think my boys are at that age where I get to take them and do that. We go, you see how high they can climb in the tree and, uh, yeah, love it. And, and there's a, I don't know, there's a, a sense of peace, I think, uh, connected with nature if we do it the right way. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And if you've listened to just yourself, Bob, uh, on, we've done seven of them so far and we'll recap them at the end. Uh, you've said so many times, I can feel my stress leave, right? Stress kills. Stress is the thing that interferes with that longevity of life. And you keep pointing it out, whether you're conscious about it or not. Yeah, I get out there with the, and the stress is gone. I did and the stress is gone. I, that, and the str- I laugh and the stress is gone, right? If I didn't stuff myself, the stress of, oh, I can't believe I ate so much. <laughs> I'll just feel it. It would be gone. It's all there for you, Bob. So I really want to thank you for sharing uh, all that I'm, stuff uh, in real I, life. That, that, again, that one is going to be hard for me, the the overeating, but um, I, I, we'll, we'll get you. We'll get you there. And Bob, as I say, thank you for sharing. Of course, that's number eight, right? And gratitude or giving thanks. Uh, gratitude is another one of the 15-point plans. Ben obviously knew how to release some of that stress as he was building the 15-point plan. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, folks, come join the 15-point plan podcast where Jolene and I take Ben's 15 point plan program and have, have turned it into a podcast to help you get out of a rut and into a groove. But Bob, it, it's giving thanks because the more you give thanks or the more gratitude you show, your happiness actually will grow. We start almost every meeting in our organization um, with a, a, a little open window for people to um, give thanks, you know, point out somebody that, that helped them thank that person. And we call it gratitude, right? So we've got a little, a little three to five minutes in front of every single meeting where somebody on the team multiple, I mean, at this point, because it's become kind of a cultural thing in our organization, there's 50 people that want to share, or you know, smaller meeting, you know, more than can even share. So we're yep. constantly, we want it to be a, you know, an organizational kind of standard that, that the people that we are connected with and that, that are part of our world are thankful, right? For whatever it is that day. And Ben always says something like, it's hard to be upset and thankful at the same time or something like that, right? So um, yeah, I can give thanks for sure. Absolutely. All right. Number nine, Bob, is live in the moment. Now, if you've ever read The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, one, you'll agree with me, it's one of the hardest books to read. Uh, but the message in it is so powerful. And it says, you know, don't regret the past and don't fear the future because today is all you have. 
And that's one of the rules of, of Ikigai is to be in the moment. And you can be sure people with a long life, they might remember the past. They might rejoice in memories of the past. They might relive moments of the past, but they're not regretting things they can't go back and do anything about. And they're not worried about what's coming next. Right? We just did an interview with a guy who, I don't know again if it'll be dropped before this or after this, put a little worry into me about the future. But then immediately after the episode, I was like, nah, I'm in the moment. You know, what happens, happens. And if I can help impact that change, whatever's going to happen, okay. Yet today is what I've got. I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. And I can't regret what happened yesterday because I can't fix it anymore. I mean, this is an episode in itself, right? Like, <laughs> um, yeah, we can't, you can't change that past. I think what, what is, there's a saying around this. It's like, uh, you know, anxiety is worrying about the past and stress is, 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 is generally look when you're looking too far into the future, like it's something like that. But yeah, I think the more that we can just focus where we are, the, the, the less, again, this, to me, this is all mental energy that leads to things like anxiety or stress. And, and when we can't, especially when we're looking in the past, can't change that. So why have anxiety and stress around it right now? We can plan for the future, but this says fearing the future. And I think one of the reasons we end up fearing the future is we don't have a plan, right? We, we've never done the wealth series and we don't have our, our, our roadmap for how we're going to retire one day, although not stop working or, or engaging our brain, right? But um, yeah, live in the moment. I love it. All right, that's number nine. That's, that's number, number nine. nine. Let's recap them, Bob. Let's go back to the top and I'll take everybody through them and then we'll hit number 10 here. Number one was stay active, don't retire. Number two was slow down. Number three was don't fill your stomach. Number four, surround yourself with good friends. Number five, get in shape. Number six, smile. Number seven, reconnect with nature. Number eight is give thanks. Number nine is live in the moment. And Bob, number 10 is simple. It's follow your ikigai. Because everyone has passion inside them and everyone has a unique talent that gives you meaning. Discover it and live it. What would you say to Bob, to our audience, who are sitting there now going, okay, I have no idea how to find my ET guy. What would you say to those people who are like, well, that's great. I can do most of those things. This 10th one's tough for me. I don't know what the center of that diagram looks like to me. Oh, man, what would I say? I, I guess, so look, this, because it's not like we're a blank slate, right? Most of us have a, a job. Or we, we, you know, like, it was not like we were starting from scratch. We were starting from scratch. I'd say, well, you know, what do you, what do you love to do, right? But we're, we're not for the most part. So what I would say today is, what, what gives you energy right now? Like what in your world that you're maybe doing already gives you energy, fills you up, makes you excited to want to do it. Mm. Uh, my wife and I were talking about this the other day. She was, she had been watching a Gary V when we know Gary V, right? A video from Gary V about how like a lot of times we'll, we'll, we'll want somebody to do something. And when they don't do that thing, then we'll say, Oh, they're lazy or they didn't care or, but the reality is they didn't care about doing that thing. We cared about them doing that thing. And, and so I would say like, what things are you drawn to do? What gives you energy? Like when you wake up each day, if there's a million things to do, what do you tend to want to do, right? You have to find that thing that gives you energy. And Ben talks about this all the time, right? He's constantly in his world trying to, to leverage off things that suck his energy, right? And trying to go lean into and do more things that give him energy. It's one of the reasons you and I do this podcast and don't get paid for it, right? And Ben said, hey, do you guys want to... And we're both like, yeah, this gives us energy. We like getting in here and, and talking and, and, and you know, bringing these, these messages that we've learned to, to people that, that maybe haven't learned them yet. So I, I guess that just the first thing I would say is try to find that thing that, that fuels you, that drives you, that gives you energy. Um, you know, and then you got to start working on the other things. Okay, well, if that's the case, uh, can I get paid for that thing? Like there maybe you go. I'm already being paid for that in some way, right? But like, can I start to carve out a niche, like a place in my, like me, for example, when I started with Ben, I didn't do, like, I wasn't doing stuff that I really, really enjoyed doing all the time, right? Over time, I've been able to, to find a lane here in our company 
and inside of our organization that allowed me to really do things almost all day long that I'm energized by, that I get, you know, I, I get energy, Chad, from, from leading these teams, from, from leading a group that's, that's out there trying to help people get more, more leverage in their business. Um, so first, find that thing that's, that's you're passionate about and then start to figure out how can I dial in more and more of, of that for pay? Right, Chad, for you, that's been, you know, you, you do a lot of speaking stuff. You've written a book. You, um, right. We, so I don't know. You're just basically working through each portion of that wheel, trying to figure out how do we get those things to line up? Cause those things, those four things are all out there independently in your world, whether you're trying to get them to line up or not. Yeah. And I think you're hitting on it really well, Bob. And one of the things I would say again is just write down what do you love? What are things the world needs? What are things you're good at? Start looking for where those three come together, what the world needs, what you're good at, and what you love doing. Because just because you're good at it doesn't mean you love it. Okay, So make sure you love it as well. And then fill in that bottom circle, which is the and get paid for. And then you'll start to see your ikigai come to life and come to the, the front as you're coming up with what those things are. And I, think I hope we all live long lives, Chad, free of stress with lots of smiles, surrounded by friends. We gave you guys some rules that can at least put you on the path to, to this being a, a more likely reality for you. Chad, look, I, we, we talk here like, like, I mean, you and I aren't in the Iki guy 100%, right? This is a constant thing that we're trying to, to hone um, yep. to, to become even, even, you know, just even more driven and passionate and, and fulfilled by what we what we do and what we get a chance to do every day when we wake up there you go and Bob, you you, my friend. we want to take the stress away from people and one of the things that brings the most stress to people you mentioned it finances money you don't have a plan you don't have a strategy for it so make sure you've gone to winmakegive.com slash wealth and gotten yourself registered for the wealth series 2.0 because it might be a little behind from when we wanted to drop it but that's because it's going to be so powerful. It'll be worth waiting for. And we want you to be there when we drop those episodes. Be notified, get the homework, work along with us as we help you go through the Win, Make, Give, Wealth Series 2.0. Until that happens, make sure you stay engaged in our Facebook group. That's Win, Make, Give. And as always, until our next episode, do good. Do good.